Now to Capitol Hill, where the focus is on a handful of moderate Democrats holding up the president's $1.75 trillion human infrastructure bill. Those five lawmakers say they want to see the CBO score, a detailed rundown of how much it will cost before agreeing to support the bill. I've got one of them with us right now, New Jersey Congressman Josh Gottheimer, co-chair of the Problem Solvers Caucus. Congressman, first, I want to congratulate you. The bipartisan bill, huge, huge achievement. I know you've been working on it for months. But let's talk human infrastructure. Why bring this CBO score up so late in the game? Well, first, Stephanie, thanks so much for having me. And uh, thanks for pointing out the big win for our country, bipartisan, I'd add, right? Democrats and Republicans came together, fix our roads, our bridges, our, uh, uh, our obviously the gateway tunnel between New York and New Jersey, get that going, our water infrastructure, rails, transit system, so much that's good for the country, 2 million jobs a year. Um, and, and to bring up the other uh, package, which also is very important, something that I've supported, uh, the reconciliation package called Build Back Better, uh, that will help us reinstate SALT, the same local tax deduction, and get taxes down for people in my district. Um, what we asked for, and as you know, except we got the bill basically final, final language on Thursday night, uh, and there were new things added, so we had questions uh, to make sure that we understood uh, how it's paid for. Uh, to understand exactly what's in it. And we think it's the responsible thing to do to read that bill. Um, it's 2,000 pages, the new bill, and to compare it to the old text, which was also 2,000 pages. So we've had people working around the clock to make sure we know what's in there um, and, and make sure it's great for our districts. And, and I'm optimistic that that'll happen. And, and the, re the numbers that we got, we hope, will match up with what we received already from the White House and Treasury on some of the data on, on the cost of the bill and, and see how they match up with the investments. So I'm optimistic that the data we will get next week, which we're expecting, uh, will, will all match up and we'll be able to move forward. Let's talk about taking a victory lap on the hard infrastructure bill. The markets yesterday hitting new highs in large part because of the bill you passed. Yet Democrats say nothing. It's like you don't want to take credit for good news on Wall Street because it alienates people. Now. The markets and the economy are not the same thing, but when Wall Street wins, Main Street doesn't lose. Half of American households have some form of investment in the market. I'm talking pensions, 401ks. By Democrats continuing to say nothing, you seed the ground for Republicans to continue to push a false narrative that they're the only party that looks at things like the markets. Well, listen, Stephanie, you know, where I live, this is a huge deal for everybody, right? I mean, fixing our roads and bridges and tunnels and making life easier to get to work uh, and fighting uh, uh, climate change are all great things for the economy. Uh, and obviously, when you're talking about competing with China, uh, which spent last year spent $3.7 trillion on infrastructure outside of China, it's just, it, you know, this took us three decades to get this package together, and we did it in a bipartisan way, right? 69 in the Senate, and uh, we got 13 Republicans to vote for it and really come through strong on Friday on the bipartisan bill. But you're right, we should take a huge win, and the country should take a huge, you know, take a victory lap as well. Um, you know, there's other legislation too that we're working on, separate bills you pointed out that also is going to be great for the country and helping with child care and fight climate change and reinstate salt and get our taxes down. Those are all great things too. But you're right, Stephanie, when the economy does well and the country does well, we should all take a victory lap, Democrats and Republicans. Can you help me understand sort of a sticking point in the human infrastructure bill? Why is it that more people can't get on board for paid family leave, right, after someone has a baby, yet where it stands right now, if I bought a private plane, I could get 100% write-off in year one. So to me, it sure sounds like you don't want to do something that would help millions of people, but there's a free hookup on the top, top end for the richest of the rich. How do you square those well, two? Well, you know, I can't speak to my, for my colleagues who don't support uh, giving people time off uh, you know, for paid leave and you've got a, a loved one or a family member sick or, um, you, you know, just had a baby. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and in New Jersey, we do do that already. Uh, and, and also other key investments here, like helping people with child care and making sure we have universal pre-K so that people have all the opportunity, our children have all the opportunity, that, that just makes sense to me. But listen, I, I, what, what matters is talking about these issues and making sure we explain to people what we're fighting for. And, and Stephanie, sometimes, right, folks aren't always good at that and aren't willing to do it. I think we should be out there talking about how we're fighting for people. I know that's why, you know, I talk about how we got to get make life more affordable for families around here, which is why we need to reinstate SALT and get that deduction, help people get some tax relief. 
Um, but but uh, you got to listen to folks, and what they want is action. They want us to fight for them, and I think both these bills do that. Do you want to? Do you want the president to take action as it relates to gas? Republicans who claim the president sets the price of gasoline are obviously wrong. However, he has levers. He can invest in gas reserves that would, at least in the short term, impact prices. Do you want him to do something? Yeah, I expect him to take action. He's, I know he's tapping the, the strategic reserve already. Um, you know, as you point out, it's a global market. Um, it's why, you know, and frankly, we're dealing with huge supply chain issues, you know, which which the infrastructure bill, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, are going to help address with our ports, making sure we fix our rail systems, right? Our, we've got to fix our roads so that you're not hitting potholes. In Jersey, we've got the third worst roads in the country. You know, that's very tough for truck drivers who are trying to move these goods. And we've got huge backup issues from COVID, as you know, in the global supply chain. So these are issues that we have to, this infrastructure bill addresses, and the president obviously can take additional measures. But people have to understand we're trying to catch up from COVID here. Um, but, and, uh, but I know that they're like, we got to get these gas prices down. Uh, we got to help people um, with prices at the grocery store. And that means getting the supply chain moving and taking every step we can to do that. Important to remember and put that in perspective where we were a year ago in COVID and where we are today. It has been tremendous. That's exactly Congressman, right. thank you for joining us this morning. I appreciate it.